What's up guys, Philippe here and welcome back to the channel. Now, knowing how to program drums is one of the most valuable skills that you guys can have. It's going to skyrocket your songwriting abilities and allow you to start speaking drummer, basically. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Oh, and by the way, I have no idea how to even hold a pair of drumsticks. So if you don't do either, don't worry about that because it doesn't matter. Oh, and also don't forget to sub and share the love if you think that this kind of stuff is going to help you. All right, now open up Cubase or whatever DAW you guys fancy and load up your drum VST of choice. Mine is Superior Drummer 3 and then create a MIDI track. There are two things you need to consider when you're choosing a drum sampler and that is how it stores your MIDI and how you search for that MIDI. Looking for a MIDI drum pattern is not exactly the same as Googling your favorite topic. And you're gonna see why in a minute. Okay, now let's load the samples that we want. I'm going to go with this Andy Snape preset as these samples are pretty dope. Make sure you let the samples load into memory. Okay, we're almost there. We're just missing one thing and that's the most important thing, which is the riff. So grab the ax and start riffing. I'll pick up mine too, but all my guitars are in the wall and I just hit the gym yesterday after three years and my arms don't go any higher than this. Okay, I hope you got a really nice riff. Since we are not drummers, we have to come up with a way to milk the drum line. Here's a trick that doesn't really work all the time, but in this case, I think it's gonna seem okay. Imagine that the fifth string is your snare and the sixth string is your kick drum. Now, personally, I really like how Bonzo from Led Zeppelin used to follow Jimmy Page's guitar. So I really like when drums accent riffs and make them go supernova massive. So let's go ahead and record that riff. Now the riff is a bit fast, so let's first, you know, slow it a little bit down so that we can hit it a little bit better. and also the cock-ups that we've done, but anyway. Now, let's get back to the drum part. With the pencil, draw an area of about eight bars because it is how long this riff is, and double click on it. Then select the drum editor and any good DAW should have one. Okay, like I said earlier, if you hit the fifth string, you get a snare. If you hit the sixth string, you get a kick drum. Okay, for this part, you can use a MIDI keyboard or the mouse. I prefer to use just the mouse. Don't forget to keep auditioning it to see if it's matching. Okay, another kick, snare, kick. Just copy and paste this. Sounds pretty dope to me. We still have another hand free, so rather than scratching our balls, we can just, you know, use a cymbal or, you know, some other kind of pattern alongside the snare. The idea here is just don't mind experimenting, but remember, there's only two arms and two legs. <laughs> You see, this is when you guys get to get creative, but just remember that a human drummer only has four limbs, so make it realistic, okay? Drummers don't hit toms with the feet or cymbals with the tongue. Okay, so here I did the entire drum line and I've added some bass as well. Let's hear the thing at full speed. Yeah, I added a bit of galloping to go with the riff a bit better. You know, just, just keep being creative and, and, and experiment with it. So now we have our first drumline skeleton. Now, another alternative is kind of what the guys from the Architects do, which is just to literally put a kick on top of every single guitar staccato and hit the snare every third beat or so. 
that also works and it sounds pretty cool. If you want to have more ideas, you can also look up drummers on YouTube playing similar styles of music as yours and focus on the videos that have the camera right behind them so that you can see what and how they are hitting the drums. You can slow down the video to say half a tempo to even hear it a little bit better. Then you can open Superior Drummer and you can have exactly that perspective of the drums in front of you. And this is great because, you know, mimicking what you're seeing on YouTube and then replicating it on Superior Drummer will really open up a lot of ideas and maybe even inspire you. But if inspiration is what you're lacking, here's alternative two. Go to your library and look in the folders with the same or approximate BPM to your riff and audition different drum parts against your riff. When you find the one that you like, drag it to the timeline, double click on it and make adjustments as you see fit. You can add or remove snares, add fills, uh, you know, just make it your own. And if you also don't like Alternative 2, don't worry, I got you covered. Here's Alternative 3, and this one I think it's exclusive to Superior Drummer. You can click on the tap to find, reduce the tempo, and hit a pattern uh, you had in your mind. It doesn't really matter if it's just the snare or the snare and kick. You know, that's usually just enough. Now, you'll get suggestions from the sampler and notice that they are, you know, listed by approximate match. You can audition these ones against your riff or song part. And once you find the one that you like, like in Alternative 2, you can drag it to the timeline and then make adjustments to it. You can also drag this part into the song creator uh, and this will give you some you know, other parts in the song structure that play really, really well along with that pattern that you've just selected. And also the fills that can go along with it as well. This is a super, super cool feature about Superior Drummer that I don't think I've seen on any other kind of drum sampler. And this is why it makes Superior Drummer my favorite drum sampler, actually. It's also why I was telling you that library management and search are so important. Very likely, you're going to end up with thousands of MIDI, and you don't really have the time or the patience to go through all of it for just to find the part that you want. The other features are also cool, but I think, in my opinion, these two are the really most important ones. And that's pretty much it. I mean, no more wondering if a riff is killer or not. I mean, once you pair uh, your riff with the drums, or better, with your drums and a bass, you will know straight away if what you have in front of you is the next Master of Puppets. And I really hope it is. I'll show you in another video how you can do the bass if you guys want, so just let me know in the comment sections below and I can make another video for you guys. Here's a little bit of personal advice. Remember that the real human drummer will have a much better feel for how the drums sound or how they should sound like. So if you're working with your band's drummer or a session musician, don't send the drum parts that you created straight away. You don't really want your bias to influence the drummer in any way. So my advice is to mute the drums before sending the parts to your drummer. Let them interpret the song in their own way. And if you don't like it or you don't like how their take was on the song, then you can share your own program drums with him. You can also add feedback and corrections by just editing the MIDI and say, hey, over here I want this kind of snare or this kind of, this kind of fill. The best part of all of this is that you now can speak drummer. All right, I hope that this is useful. And if so, don't forget to subscribe and share the love. I will leave you now with a few riffs that I did and programmed and shared with my favorite drummer, Chris Allen. And there's no sampler on the planet that can do what he does. Anyway, have a great week and do not stay three years without exercising.